you didn't sound any bit like a crisis. <laughs> Okay. So what do you guys get for that first part? Anybody got that answer yet? For this one? Zero point zero three six two. Yeah. Point oh three six two. Yeah. Kick ass. So just under a four percent chance that that would happen. So now I can figure out. The expected number of workers that would worry about this, right? So that would be N times P. What do you guys get for that? 26.52. 26.52? The 20? 25.32. So 211 times 0.12, right? And this will be square root of 211 times 0.12 times 0.88. Just throw stuff in there. So what do you guys get for that? 4.5320. Huh? 4.720. Yeah, 4.720. Square root. Uh, 211 times 0.12 times 0.88. Make sure the whole thing is under the square root symbol. I like it. Okay. So we, on average, 25. So now we can see how far away from that is where unusual starts. So if I put 25.32 in the middle, and they go up two steps and down two steps, standard deviations. So if they go up two of these, so I can do exactly this. Sorry, I'm gonna catch up to you. Yeah. Plus two times these. <clears throat> so start at the mean, and go up two of these, bam. Mm -hmm. And then watch, I get a second enter and go, okay, now I go down, bam. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So it'll be 15.88 up to 34.76. Since this is number of people, then I would say anywhere from 16 to 34 would be usual. If I got that amount, I wouldn't be freaked out. So part D says, what if you see 14? It's unusual. That would be unusual. So for some random group of 211 workers, if I only saw 14 of them were worried, I start to wonder, where am I? Something's different about this area where I am because it's not what I expected to see. It's not what I would usually see. So is this unusual? Yes. Why? Because it's outside of there. It's down here. It's outside of what's usual. So it's unusual. It's crazy. Kick ass. You guys all right? So that's part of what's going to be on that quiz and of course the other part is going to be the x p of x stable stuff that we've done I think plenty of we'll see all right so we're going to get into any, any questions from that because we're about to get into chapter six if it feels like it's fast it's not chapter five only had two sections so just reminding guys for the quiz I will have all the formulas on there Right. Typed up on a computer so you can read them. Let's <laughs> go say share. Okay. Um, so we're going to get into the next chapter. So, what's the big thing we've learned about from chapter five? Continuous distributions. If I can draw the distribution, the probabilities are equal to the Area, I like it. I like it. Looked like I was blessing something there. I don't know. Um, so I kind of gave a little preview of how things kind of start to suck when you have distributions that have a weird shape. Because our regular old geometry can only handle straight sides unless it's a circle. 
You guys with me a little bit? A little tiny bit? All right. Um, so when I have a shape like the normal curve, the normal distribution, let me kind of formalize a few things that have been sort of in the background. Um, so whatever the mean is, I'm going to put a zero there. And then I'm going to put a one here and a negative one there. It's amazing. So what do those numbers represent? Okay. Formalize that a little bit. How far the series of these numbers So instead of steps, say, st standard deviations, right? So here we go. You guys ready? Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna. I'm about to tell you something else that will be on the next test. This is insane. This is the second thing. This actually will be on every test from now on. What I'm about to tell you. It's gonna be a question on every test from now on. I am disheartened. I'm so hopeful that maybe this is the semester I'll get more than half of the people get it right. Even though I'm gonna tell you right now what the question will be. And what the answer will be. Okay, and this is what everybody always wants. I'm giving it to you. What does a z-score tell you? I don't know if you guys remember. The z-score tells me the number of standard deviations from the to a data point. So these are actually z-scores. So the z-score tells you. number of standard deviations from the mean to a data point. So the z-score exists for each data point. It's not a thing. It's a thing that you can calculate for each data point. I like it. Okay. So here's something that's sort of been um, out there. I haven't really formalized your requirement to know this. Anybody remember what percentage of data is within one standard deviation for a normal curve? This number's come up a few times. No. 60. <laughs> 68. I feel like I was on prices right. Hi, Laura. If you look at the picture, that the 68 exactly doesn't necessarily make sense, but the fact that over half is in here makes sense because that's where it's the tallest, right? Over half of the stuff is in there. Yes. Oh, what happened to him? Did I never start it back up? No, I don't know. Oh, no, he's, no. he's just, I, I have it uh, trying to save some battery. Uh, oh, and it's far away. I see, what you're, I see what you're saying. It's still set up for the screen. So I will ask you, what does a z-score tell you for a data point? There's the answer. Maybe don't memorize the words, but I know some of you will. But just, can you see how it just makes sense? So, so I always like to say that standard deviation is the tick marks on a ruler. Z-score is when I lay that ruler down to see how far apart things are. That's it. All right, maybe, maybe. So 68% is within one step. Within two steps, there's actually 95%, which is why we go two steps out and say it's unusual if it's outside, because what percentage would be outside then? 5%. So there's only a 5% chance of something out here happening. So now watch this. Let me give you a very specific example. Um, the average height of uh, American men is 69 inches. And the standard deviation is 2.8, I believe. I didn't check it this morning. They were at the recession, maybe we shrunk a bit. I don't know. So the mean is 69 inches. So what height would this be right there? Yeah. 
do it. What does that one mean? That means I got, I've gone one standard deviation up from the mean. 71.8, right? Just add those, start at 69 and go one of these up. So that would be 71.8. No. And if I go one down, 69 minus 2.8, So what percentage of American men are between 66.2 inches and 71.8 inches tall? 68%. 68%. See how if I know something is normally distributed, that is so useful. Yes? No? What percentage of American men, well, let's see, what's this one going to be? Seventy-four point six. What percentage of American men are taller than seventy-four point six inches? Two point five. Yes. How the shit did you get that? Well, what percentage is in here? Ninety-five. So what percentage is out there? Five. So what percentage is over there? Two and a half. Because the whole picture is symmetric. Maybe you guys see that? That's really useful. So if I made a door that was 74.6 inches tall, percentage of guys would have to duck to get in the room, two and a half percent. That's why the door is actually more like 76 inches tall because it's a, it's a PR issue then really. If you go to some place and you're, and you're uh, 74.6 inches tall and you have to duck everywhere, you're like, I'm not gonna come back here. <laughs> or you gotta be like, screw this place, you guys suck, whatever, right? Maybe, maybe. Same thing you do for like average hip width of a of a American and how wide the airplanes make their seats. So it's kind of like a uh, number of people you can cram in the airplane versus the number of complaints you want to handle. You, can, you see what I'm saying? So you can use statistics to figure out what percentage can we expect to not quite fit comfortably, and so therefore we can kind of gauge how many complaints we should expect to get. And, and we can control what our image is in the news, because if we get too many complaints, we're in the news. Maybe, maybe? I mean, this is just the bare beginnings of what you can use this stuff for. Okay. Um, so, what desperately sucks about this image is if I want to know, so we can answer, you, I could ask you all kinds of questions like the one I just did, and you can figure it out by subtracting and all this kind of business. But there's no way in hell you could tell me what's from uh, 0.57 up to uh, 1.91. What's that area right there? You can't, not with what we know. And if I try to do like we did with uniform, let me just find the area. Let me just find the area of this, where am I going? Yeah, this shape. Can you find the area of that shape? What is that? It's a trapezoid that somebody sat on, right? Maybe? So do we have a geometric formula for that? For a shape that has a curvy side like this? No, we do not. So what we're going to do is you're gonna be so excited. So I, I think I told you that's the last time. So with uniform curves, it's rectangles. We're all over that shit. Even if I gave you a triangular distribution, you could still do areas because the geometry is there for us. The minute a side is curved, oh shit, we need help. We need calculus. Instead of learning calculus, let's just have calculus people make a table of answers for us, right? which is what this is. This is all the answers to definitely everything in chapter six. You just have to know where to go to find them. So that's what we're gonna focus on right now is learning how to read this thing. So instead of doing rectangles and figuring out the areas, I can just figure out how to know where to look on this and get the area because it's a shape I can't do anyway. It may be.
All right, let's see. So I'll, the very first thing I want to do, let's look at this for a second. Let me kind of take this away for a second. This is the, that's the, what percentage should be in here, right there? What percentage should that be? It's the same thing we did for that. So what percentage is from negative one to one? 68. 68. So what percentage is outside? No, uh, 68 five. in, what percentage is out? Five. All right, let's try this again. Let me draw it again. Uh, Oh, you mean out of 68 or out of yeah, the place I'm talking about? Oh, okay. So it's 68% in there. How much is outside? Holy sh what's happening? 68% in the house. What percentage is outside the house? 32. 32. Then you cut it in half to get 16. Okay, okay, that was exciting. <laughs> so if I use this chart to get this area, it better be 16. Or we can throw this chart out and, you know, go get some. It's too early for curious. Right. Um, so here's how to read this chart. The one I'm talking about right now, negative one, right? I want to know the area below negative one. Is that negative or positive? Negative. negative. Okay. So you can see there's a negative side. Hopefully I got both in there, John. That would have been so funny if I would have had the same thing. So there, oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Come back to life. And then set you back up. Do, do, do. Why did I make it so dark? Oh, well, too bad for me. All right. So if you look at the negative side, this is a little bit weird to read this chart. Um, the way this chart works is this side is the first decimal place, and then this is the second decimal place. That's how they were able to manage to get it to be just on one piece of paper. So if I want to look at negative 1.00, right? Negative 1. Point O, you see that? Negative one point O, and then what's the next decimal place? O. Oh. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> that was awesome. So negative one point O O. What's the? And look what this chart tells you. What does this chart always tell you? The area that is below the z score you are looking up. That's all this chart tells you. So then it's going to lead to some human intervention to adjust things sometimes. But let's see. All I want right now is the area below negative 1. So what do I get? Negative 1.00. What's the area below that? Yeah, and what's that round up to? 16%. So this chart is just more detailed, but it's the same stuff. Maybe, maybe. Yes. Is this just basically like the integral of it? You got it. I, I, that's what I said. It's the calculus. So oh. this is a chart made up of integrating from negative infinity up to whatever. If you don't know what I just said, you're fine. Because you don't have to know calculus to come in here. We just employed, I keep saying that we employ calculus. I am one of those people. But we, we just employed calculus people to make this for us. We're like, thanks, guys. We're going to use the shit out of this. So this is in place of calculating the area of a rectangle. I look up in this chart. It's still finding an area, which is the probability. All right, so let's try a couple more out. Man, I always forget to bring just paper. Do we have paper at the bottom? So I don't have to keep going between the board and who wants to get some brownie points? Anybody? Thank you. Oh no. All right, so let's see. Let's try something else. Let's do one we just did. Let's do another one we just did. We just did the area above this earlier. I don't know if you guys remember. And we got 2.5% just by using our 
numbers we know from the empirical world, which is how the normal curve is distributed. Let's verify this. Now, what's wrong, what's kind of bad about it, if you look up 2.00, so of course now you got to look on the positive side, there will be a shortcut. So in case you see a shortcut, I will talk about it in a minute. Look up 2.00. What do you get? Yeah, 2.00. 9772, but where is that on the picture? Where's point nine seven seven two? It's whenever you look up a z-score, you get the area below it. So my God, the people that don't draw this picture are the ones that will make the silliest mistakes. Draw the picture, put on there the area you found below what you looked up, and then say, is that the answer? No, it's the other side I want. So then how would I actually get that then? I want this side, don't I? Yeah. I want to verify this number. One minus, <clears throat> one minus, holy shit, there's the whole one minus thing. I got a chunk, I want the other chunk. One minus what I know is the other part, is that? So that's what I mean by we will have to adjust what we see on this chart sometimes because it's very single-minded. It only knows areas below. So what is one minus 0.9772? 0 0.0228. 0228. So they took a lot of liberties in their rounding, but it's not that far off. And maybe. Oh, sorry. You're cool with the 9772? And then one minus that oh. is over here. Right? That's the whole thing. We're getting you ready for all this shit. That's what I tried to do. All right, let's get a more interesting Z score in here. Can you guys look up? Uh, let, me, let me make this more formalized. The probability that Z is less than 1.38. Try to draw that picture and label it and look it up. Try to do that whole thing. People that do this are the people that will make less mistakes. goes in the middle. Yeah, because we're talking about z-scores, right? Mm -hmm. And the z-score is the mean, which is in the middle, will have a z-score of zero, because it's zero away from itself. So when I have z-scores, I know this is zero. So the very first weird-ass thing I see people do is they'll put 1.38 wherever the hell they feel like putting it at that moment. Where the hell's 1.38 go? Up here, Up here right? I don't care where it is over here, to be honest. It should be over here somewhere, right? Maybe not way the hell up there. Maybe not right next to zero. But on that side would be nice. You know what I mean? The picture is supposed to help you. So here's 1.38. Can you guys shade in the area of the question once? Where would you shade it? Come a three. Come a three. Okay. I would shade in this way because I have less than. The great thing about these inequality symbols are they are arrows that point you in the direction of shade. Right? All of math is trying to help. So when you look up 1.38, what do you guys get? 1.9162. Yeah, let's see. Just in case anybody's having some trouble. 1.38. Don't look up there, I get lost. 1.38, see that? So it's 0.9162. Yes? So right here I put 0.9162 and I'd circle it because I can see that answers my question. And even before I looked it up, I knew it was gonna be bigger than half. My answer better be bigger than 50% or else I did something wrong. That's what the picture should do for you. Give you a way to check to make sure the answer makes sense. Oh, I forgot to tell you the shortcut, damn it. Um, 
Look back up here real quick. Just in case, you're, this isn't a huge shortcut. Look, on, look at negative 2.00. Look at negative 2.00 on your chart. What do you get? Get the answer. If you think about it for a second, the area that's above 2 should be equal to the area that's below negative 2 because it's symmetric. All right? If you don't like what I just said, you don't have to do that because we did this problem without doing that, right? It is a tiny, tiny shortcut. That's available. It's sort of like your car blinker, though. If you don't always know how to use it, maybe never use it. Just have a little tiny mini rent. I hate it when somebody's changing lanes and their blinker's going the other way. I'm like, get off the road. You, that's never happened to you? Or you guys are just better at it? All right. Whatever. All right, let me throw this one at you and not say shit. Oh yeah. Try to at least draw that bad boy. If you're not sure what to do, we'll talk about it, but let's see. This is a very physical idea that we're gonna use here. set up myself that I haven't made a big deal of this. All today has been about normal distributions, <coughs> right? That's what we're focusing on. That z-score chart won't do a damn thing for you if you don't know you're working with a normal distribution. That's what this thing was built for. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't say it's normally distributed, you can't draw this, you can't use the chart, shit, <laughs> right? So a big part of statistics is when do I know something is normally distributed? There's just some quick ways to know that. So that's going to come up a couple times this semester is tests to see if it's normal enough because then I can use my sheet of answers, right? So if I draw this, negative 1.91, every, hopefully everybody put it over there somewhere. 0.42 goes up there somewhere. And what's the best way to read this? The probably that Z is between those two. So I want that area right there. Now, does the chart directly understand that area at all? It only understands areas that are below. So if you look up 0.42, anybody look up 0.42? What, what area do you get for 0.42? 0.66. 0.66? Two eighths. Two eight? I concur. Okay. Is that too much or not enough area for the answer? It's too much. You guys see that? The amount of area is too damn high. So I've got to cut off a certain amount. Do you guys see that? This is a very physical idea. This kicks so much ass. That's too much area. I wanted to stop here. So how much area exactly do I want to subtract from this? Which area do I want to subtract from this? What's the other area? Point zero. This one, right? Yeah. This area includes the answer and this. So if I could just figure out what this area is, which I can, I can subtract. Yes? yes. It's very physical. It's really nice. It's not just math. It's, you can actually see it physically happening. So what do you guys get for the negative 191? 0 0.0281. 0 0.0281? So to get the answer, you subtract those two. Oh, let's see, what do you get? So 
All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And subscribe. By the way, I want to make a big deal out of something. What kind of numbers am I always putting down here? What are these representing? Z scores. What kind of numbers am I always putting up here? What are these? Areas. Areas or probabilities, right? So like we've been talking about, area equals probability. So I will actually say those interchangeably, because in my head, they're the same thing for these kind of problems. Area is probability for this, just like on the dartboard. Maybe, maybe. So be really careful. What really, really sucks is, doesn't point four two look like an area? So if you're not careful and just staying on top of your your, your mind wants wants to just race off, oh yeah, point four two forty two percent. I'm done. No, you gotta no no brain. That's a freaking Z score. You gotta look that shit up. Okay. So that's point six three four seven. Yeah. Are we done with you? Yes, we are. Six three four seven. Yep. Yeah. Right. What does that mean? The area. Good. The area between this and this on a normal curve is that. The probability of getting a Z score between this and this is that. Mm -hmm. Right. So if the test grades in a class were normally distributed, the probability that the Z score for your test was between this and this is sixty three and a half percent almost. So, let me think. Is it astronauts? I think astronauts have a, a minimum height they have to be and a maximum height they have to be. And we know the distribution of heights for men. So if I wanted to open an astronaut training facility in a certain city, I can see the statistics of that city and estimate what percentage of men would actually be eligible to be astronauts. And I can see if it's even viable. If the city happens to be all short people, I'm like, well, maybe this is not a great place to open it because none of them will be eligible. I don't know. Do you guys kind of see what I'm saying? So it's sort of, okay.